evening. My name is Richard Miller and you're at the Never Not Here channel and uh, I've got active periods and passive periods and uh, so when it was the beginning of the garden season it was very passive around here. <laughs> I was thinking let, I'm going to be a nature boy this summer but anyhow now I'm uh, kind of on a roll so uh, you can expect to see some action and uh, what do I want to say, you know, like, I find myself saying so much of the same stuff. I, I hope it's not too annoying, but uh, a lot of uh, teaching about a new way of looking at life kind of makes some basic distinctions. Even the old lore, lore and the old traditions talk about the world is illusion and Maya and stuff like that. So one, once you say the world is illusion, of course, you must be saying it because something else, something is real. And so then I, I tend to feel like people are trying to work their way through that. And, say, and it's kind of like an automatic tendency that uh, if something's an illusion, I should, I should go for the real. And uh, so then I'm not so sure, you know, I think that's a good intention, but I'm not so sure the way to go there is by rejecting the illusion. And so then I tend to start out a lot of times by saying, uh, uh, by justifying the conventional wisdom and like our conventional thought patterns and so on, I justify it and say, well, that's the game we're playing. And uh, uh, I, so today, I, maybe I won't do that. Probably I will. It'll, I'll get into it. But uh, uh, so let's just see what happens. So please help me welcome Lisa Cairns from Perth, Australia. Hi, Lisa. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, thinking about Down Under lately, so then I looked you up. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, like I was uh, just kind of saying, like, I'm getting tired of my introductions. I don't know. Do you want to make an introduction? <laughs> what type of introduction? Well, you know, I mean, what do you like to talk about? What do I like to talk about? I won't put you on the spot, but anyhow, you know, I'm saying uh, uh, we reject a lot about our lives, including ourselves. And it has a funny feeling. It feels wiggly, you know, like, oh boy, I don't know. And then we try to figure out, well, is it real? Is there really something about us to reject? Or uh, how does that come about anyhow? I don't think we were doing it when we were born or when we were one or when we were two. And so then where does it all come from? As soon as there's, as soon as it's not even thinking, but as soon as there's a sense that I do something, that I can do something, there'll always be a sense of rejection. There'll always be a sense of wanting to get somewhere and averting. <laughs> I can do something, huh? and so then I don't have. Then I should do something. It goes automatically with that, right? And so yeah, I, sh I should do something. I can do something. I should do something, and then I shouldn't do something else, and that's the rejection right yeah. there. Bingo. Yeah, yeah. It always comes back down to. Well, I, I say this, and this is just the way um, I was taught. It's not like I don't have a sense that I know the answers. I just sit here and speak, and it normally um, comes back to what I was taught and the way that my teachers talked about it. And it always comes back down to um, uh, as soon as you identify with being a somebody, instantly seeking starts, and instantly there is a, a seeking for pleasure and averting pain. And this is the dynamic of suffering. And this is the dynamic that we don't want. It's not that we want liberation. It's not that we want this idea of being oneness. We just want the dynamic of the seeking to stop. That's what keep, causes all the suffering in the apparent human being. That's kind of interesting because you said as soon as we uh, identify... Help me out there. What did you say again? As soon as we identify with, with being separate... Being a somebody. Being a somebody, being being a somebody being right? Somebody. As soon as there is identification of being a somebody. Right. Yeah. 
then then uh, then seeking begins. Seeking begins. But I mean, you know, I I don't think you could say it was volitional, right? I didn't want to be a somebody, and so then it's probably not volitional to stop being a somebody, right? And no, so then, no. is it all that is it all that handy to say it? You know, because like. You could notice that uh, when I when it stops by itself, it'll feel different, right? <laughs> Is it all that handy to say it? Yeah. Because um, I can't really just do it. it. Yeah, yeah. No, and saying it or not saying it is, it's like there's the saying it or not saying it just happens, and you sitting there listening to it is what's just happening too. So if it's to say, is it handy to say it or not say it is. You, you can't even say that because it's just happening. So we can't even go into the story that this is the correct thing to say or incorrect. There's no sense here that I can reject any teachings or that anything is right or wrong because as soon as you say this is the right thing to do or that's the right thing to do, you're assuming that there is something and um, somebody doing something. It's all just happening absolutely perfectly, all of it. Even the apparent rubbish teachers, good teachers, bad teachers, but... You can't even get into that because. <laughs> what do you think about the word tendencies? Is that really? I mean, I guess we we say that when we speak about personalities, right? People have tendencies, yeah. or uh, I have a ten. I have seem to have tendencies because certain things in my life keep turning up, and then uh, maybe my twin brother, uh, the same. He had the same upbringing as me. I don't have a twin, by the way, but. Uh, uh, he has another set of tendencies because his life has another look to it. And, you know, in, in one way, we're just saying that that's what arises for the two of us. His tendencies. Yeah. Yeah, and there is, um, like, like uh, I grew up uh, drinking tea, and I still really enjoy a good cup of tea. And it's, always, it's the same tea as what I enjoyed when I was younger. Uh -huh. And there's, yeah, there are tendencies that appear to arise. But that's only apparently. We live in a world that apparently works in cause and effect and time. Yeah. So that's how this story is going to play out. It's going to play out logically because that's the world we live in. So these tendencies are going to apparently keep appearing. Yeah. So tendencies, just to be clear, kind of like mean a pattern, you know, because they repeat. Yeah. So then otherwise yeah. they're not a tendency, uh, you know, if they don't repeat. And so somehow yeah. uh, they repeat in time too. So then they don't repeat yeah. in the here and now, and and it, time is always in the here and now. Uh, that's clear. Yeah. But I mean, uh, yeah. you know, when you go into your mind, you can see tendencies. Uh, I don't know. Is that a good good statement? Or when you go into your memory patterns, you can you you know that's where tendencies reside. They don't really reside just right here, but. Um, yeah. The mind works on apparent tendencies because it works the mind is all based in time so yeah it will always work on patterns yeah and it will always it's not gonna it's not going to become it's not going to have certain tendencies and then become something absolutely abstract from those tendencies it's not going to be a spiritual seeker and then suddenly become an olympic swimmer yeah it's always going to follow that pattern because that's the way of the world the tree is always going to grow into a tree. It's not going to just suddenly become an umbrella. Right. It's very logical. Well, and it's only going to give cherries <laughs> if it's a cherry tree, right? Of course, because we get yeah. some grafting, but anyhow. Unless, unless, of course, maybe you're taking yeah, some uh, hallucinogenic drugs, and then it might turn into an umbrella. It looks like an umbrella. <laughs> or it could function like an umbrella on a rainy day, you know, but it also could be a lightning yeah. rod on that same day, you know. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> So then I'm just kind of turning around, you know, saying like tendencies are kind of like, well, you know, science is also kind of uh, works with tendencies because they have something called mathematics and they have something called uh, probability. And I guess a lot of people even refer to science coming closer and closer to non-duality. But that part of science, like, uh, uh, you know, the quantum physics uh, really works a lot in probability. And so then, really, it, uh, it's almost saying that the manifest world is a tendency because it's got a probability of showing up here or there or going this fast or that fast or having that momentum and, or this momentum or energy. And they're saying you can't pin it down, but, I mean, uh, you can predict its tendencies. And uh, so then that's kind of like maybe what I was referring to before is, is that a handy thing to say? Because if I had a belief that um, it wasn't a handy thing to say, I wouldn't have the tendency to say it, and it probably wouldn't be said anymore. 
okay. Uh, is it a handy thing to say? Um, seeing that all this is arising completely impersonally is eventually what um, comes about. So seeing that um, that that um, Lisa has a, a tendency to not want to clean out the chicken cage is um, is seen. It's it's seen maybe every day that that's not something she wants to do. But it's completely impersonal. Like these tendencies, these patterns arise, but they're nothing to do with who you or what you are. They're just appearing exactly the same as the window frames appearing, as the rooms appearing, as you're appearing there. So saying that um, it's just tendencies arising, yeah, this world is just arising in apparent time and space, and it f follows a logical um, pattern. Whether or not that will lead to happiness, again, is not down to this conversation. Well, we'll we can get to that, that part, be. you know. <laughs> you wish yeah. we jump there or what, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question, you know. Like, I mean, uh, the never-ending unfolding or something or the never-ending change in tendencies or arising or, you know. I guess a part of us uh, only can notice contrast or the difference. Uh, and uh, and the difference only appears in in a time in a time machine, right? And, you know, the difference is not here both at the same time. You know, I mean, what's here is here, not and there's no difference there. So the difference has to be kind of like juxtaposed a uh, a, uh, a picture from the past, picture from the memory bank has to be juxtaposed on uh, on the present to see if there's a difference, and then and then we recognize something. I get. And isn't that amazing that um, that ability of the human, the fact that we can that we can think in time and space, that the, the, the human being, the, the uh, mechanics of the human being can remember past and can see difference, can remember being an apparent child and then can see themselves as an old person. This is um, a beautiful way of seeing the story in a different way, like the fact that a bird can't see uh, time, like it can't really perceive time, but a human can perceive time. It can perceive a whole another level of a story. The bird can only perceive um, uh, eating and its, its immediate sensation, where the human can perceive memory and the ideas of memory, which of course never happen. But it's a divine act that the human being can apparently perceive stories. This is that can perceive a sense of self, that can perceive um, uh, uh, a beginning and end, difference movement it's amazing and animals can in some way like dogs have a greater sense of um of memory than say an ant but it's an amazing ability <laughs> no i'm totally with you on that one because uh i say that often too but every once in a while somebody blocks me and say well what do you really know about an ant you know <laughs> yeah, yeah they always uh, stymie me you know but i mean with you i'm comfortable because uh you're saying the same thing i would have said right and it's amazing that we can perceive the differences and, and uh, create a story. And we might even go farther. It's amazing that we can create differences and create a story because who knows if it really is a difference or there really is a story, you know, or if, certainly if, yeah. who knows if it's that one, the one I tell. <laughs> and anyhow, I kind of tell it different every time. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's complete. Yeah. It's all creative. Yeah, it's so creative. What a divine way to, to watch the world, to watch it through a, a human being that can, or to create, to create a human being that can see time and space and can perceive stories, can create stories, can watch films, can, uh, can talk to each other like this, can comprehend science. I mean, it's just a brilliant way to, another drama to watch the world through. Instead of just watching it through a fish who just... <laughs> I don't know the experience of yeah. the fish, but I presume it's just a, a very blank watching. Very wet, huh? <laughs> but anyhow, like, uh, you know, that the film part is really neat because, like, nobody's there, you know. It's just, like, uh, little blotches of light and little sounds. And so then yeah. we can say, oh, yeah. yeah, well, when you're with another person, there's a lot of reflection. There's mirror neurons. There's all kind of uh, feeling. There's, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the morphic field or something like that. There's a, the field of life. Uh, but here with a film, there's really none of that, you know. There's just a total imagination, right? Yeah. It's killer. 
<laughs> so then, uh, you know, there's two parts to that because, like, one uh, whole, there's there's two uh, political parties. Let's say <laughs> one group yeah. votes that all that stuff that they're seeing is real, and they're going to be they're adequate to it too, and that they're going to uh, they have to take action. Uh, you know, where they need to defend and where they can celebrate. And then, and another group says, hey, I'm just creating this stuff and I'm going to create a good story now. <laughs> Enough of those bad stories, you know. And it seems like I like the second group because that's, that's a bit more flexible. People believe in themselves, right? They believe in their perceptions. Yeah. There's, no, there's not um, a sense here that um, there's somebody um, here doing something. Right. I had a pretty strong <laughs> feeling of that once I went to uh, I went to India, you know, and it was just so new and so different. And uh, a lot of people were hitting me up to do this. Hey, do that. Hey, let's go here. Or, hey, how about this? And I thought, my God, is this fast, you know, and uh, not just in the spiritual realm either, all over the map, you know, all over the map. I was in the business and all kinds of things all at once, you know, like in 100 days. And, uh, and I was filming, of course, and doing that stuff, too. But that wasn't my main purpose. And then I was actually taking some workshops and whatnot. And uh, it happened so fast and it changed so often that I just really knew it couldn't have been me who was doing it. <laughs> but you don't always get that chance, you know. Maybe life goes slow and, you, and you're methodical about it. And uh, um, uh, you really believe that uh, you have to get up and get some go power and make a change happen. And... Uh, and you feel like yeah, it's all on your back, you know. We're holding the whole world up. It's pretty heavy duty, right? <laughs> if you believe you're doing everything. Yeah, yeah, it's an incredible amount of suffering. Yeah. It's, it's everything that it's everything that the that is not wanted, but and it's everything that's not wanted. Hang on, <laughs> just let me follow that string. So. What do you you got a good definition of suffering? Yeah, this is, this is what suffering is. It's everything, and everything the human wants, they think that they can get it through doership, but it's, it's never going to be found through that. So they're caught, caught in this loop of thinking that happiness is found in seeking, in seeking uh, a beautiful house, in seeking spirituality, in seeking something. And that loop is always what um, covers their own true happiness or their own true um, space or peace or love. And a lot of teachers don't ever talk about it in the positive, but it seems that this being does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me uh, again, what do you mean by a lot of, <laughs> a lot of teachers? Uh, clarify that, what, what teachers don't talk about in the positive. A lot of teachers um, uh, uh, and teachings, talking about it in the positive then just creates another expectation. So saying it's love or saying it's space or beauty or anything just creates another expectation and just creates another desire of the seeker. So, so they seek harder. Of teachers refrain from, <laughs> so uh, then they seek harder, right? Yeah. <laughs> they really get it. Yeah. It, just creates, it just creates another dynamic that people look at me and they feel this love and then they, or they sense this love and then they think she's got something I want and then they come to me and apparently try and seek something and get something from me and there's nothing that can ever be got from me but it's completely it, you, you're complete as you are it's just seeing that the seeing that nothing in the world that nothing in spirituality that nothing in the mind nothing in understanding as well intellectual understanding will ever bring happiness it's naturally who you are so what can all those things do they can just uh, give you an experience right yeah just a great drama a great drama because in that drama, there could be immense high pleasures. You know, you get, you think you get what you want, you get the lover that you want, and bang, there's a high, huge drama. And then there's the, the lover guy goes, the lover dies, and boom, you're into huge suffering. It's great, it's great fun. <laughs> Consciousness loves it. It's great suffering too, then. Yeah. With the high, there comes the incredible, immense lows that everyone tries to avoid, <laughs> and everyone's petrified of. So they're caught in this continuous loop of trying to get to pleasure and avoid pain. And that whole dynamic is really not what they want at all. It's a complete trick. You know what? As I, can hear some, I can hear some background laughing. Oh, yeah. Or is this you? Today? Yeah, I got it. I'm a ventriloquist. <laughs> I can laugh while I, <laughs> while I talk. <laughs> 
So, uh, you know, you said uh, somehow, as long as you're doing, you, uh, you know, when we were talking about suffering, and you say as long as you want to get somewhere by being a doer, suffering's going to be part of the package, you know. But um, so many people don't have a clue what we're talking about when we say that, or uh, maybe they maybe they've even heard that, you know, maybe I'm not the doer, but it doesn't really r hit home somehow. And uh, so then they can't really, what do I, so then the only thing they can think of is non-doing or not doing. So then they freeze yeah, up, then they, they freeze up, right? And then it's worse, right? Yeah. And then, and then they say, but then nothing will happen. Life happens. And that's the dynamic, seeing that life happens and nobody doing anything. Thoughts still appear. And this is um, the big, the big trick that a lot of people get stuck on. They think that that in no doing, you're going to almost have a lobotomy, lobotomy and end up sort of in a state of like walking around like with nothing at all happening, almost like an empty robot. But this isn't true. Thoughts still appear. The thought appears, I'm going to get a cup of tea. So you get up and get a cup of tea. There's nobody ever getting that cup of tea. There's no sense here that I am getting a cup of tea. This is just seen as a thought arising exactly the same as the computer arises. But in another sense, there's another sense that um, that there's a sense of it of being everything as well. So saying there's no sense it's me, that's one side. But then there's also another sense that all of it's me, or all of this is um, is uh, me. So there's a sense of being no thing, but there's also a sense of being everything. But it's hard to talk about, so I just will talk about it as in like there's no sense of this thought being me. But I'm just making a disclaimer that actually there's also a sense that everything is me. So the thoughts still arise, like thoughts still arise of apparent doership, like um, I'm going to take my dogs for a walk now, or I'm going to contemplate um, whether or not to um, uh, go into Perth shopping later or not. This contemplation will happen, but there's no sense that there's anybody contemplating. There's no sense that that, that, that is me. This is just the mechanism of the human to think. It's a beautiful, thinking doesn't stop. Many people think that it's about stopping thinking. Thinking doesn't stop, it arises for nobody. It arises just in empty space, just like the body seems to arise every day, just like this wall, just like sensations and motions. Sensations move faster, though. The wall doesn't move that quite that fast. But uh, what did I want no. to say? Like, and sensations, uh, sensations feel a lot more personal as well. Yeah, unless, <laughs> unless you bump into the wall, maybe they'll get personal. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to point out the fact that uh, when you say non-doing, people think that means doing, you know, nothing. And then we're we're no, capable of doing nothing in a way because we can just kind of say no for uh, for a whole bunch of hours strung together and just sit there you know and think or i don't even know sometimes our beliefs uh oh i believe i can do a lot and this is a really good project i believe i'm capable and then i'm full of energy and i go for it right uh well it's a tendency or something like that i don't i don't have to say it's me that is full of energy but energy arises and uh, there's a lot of movement toward a certain project or i can believe like oh i can't do nothing in this thing or you know there's this is beyond me or this is and then uh, actually a depression kind of sets in or a, re a resignment or something the energy leaves my body that you know i'm not even able to uh and so then i'm saying like uh people d don't really flow with it like you said just go get a cup of tea with no thought tie your shoes in no thought needed and somehow uh, uh the confusion is that i'm thinking oh, well if i'm not a doer then i must be a not doer and then that's something i could do too and that gets people into trouble yeah yeah, it? yeah exactly yeah and the a pro, a, a apparent process here when uh in the story of lisa of of um of uh, exploring this and lying down for a long period and just apparently doing nothing but that is still doing something but um that's uh it's just another little trick. Yeah, just a lying down <laughs> yes, thing you're doing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What did you do there? Lay down, still yeah. something. <laughs> you know, I talk to a lot of people. Uh, you know, even ones that are now finding themselves as speakers or guests or uh, presenters or whatever you want to say, and uh, uh, 
you know, things fell apart or things went up, moved, you know, their life moved from one thing to another. And maybe they realized there was, maybe they realized it was not some, you know, it was just something that was happening. It was just something, they realized all that, right. And uh, yet, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Somehow their energy level followed their, their, the structure of what they thought was valuable and what they thought wasn't valuable. Even, I mean, let's not even say they thought, you know, let's just say that uh, the thought arose and they already knew that that thought wasn't a pertaining to them. Somehow they were the, they had a private vision on that thought, but somehow it didn't seem like it predated any action or anything like that. But an energy level did come with it. And uh, in fact, I was just talking to a very good teacher this afternoon, and uh, I was saying, well, you could always go get a job. And she says, it would never happen. <laughs> I, I don't know. I couldn't get, get involved in that, you know. And somehow she has no energy for it, right? I mean, some of the old things we have no energy for. And I don't know, what, what's that connection anyhow? How does that work? Is that a belief structure? Or I mean, you just, you're going to just say that's what arises, right? And that, but if you look at it from the tendency side, something else, something else is grabbing you. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of tendencies uh, changed it. Like a lot of tendencies changed in uh, this apparent process. This um, quite often happens to, to people. This, this being used to um, be very shy. She's not that now. These tendencies seem to change. I don't know what, why. I don't really like uh, have any intellectual idea about it. Yeah. It's just well, I'll give you one, you know, because I was very shy too. <laughs> or I mean, you know, I wasn't all that shy. Maybe I was more like, you know, lashing out and stuff like that. But I didn't want to, you know, I really didn't want to make a mark on anybody and stuff like that. And uh, you know, why was I shy? Like. Uh, I must have thought the results of being shy were were valuable, and now I don't really give a hoot. <laughs> They're not valuable. You yeah, know? there's no there's no investment in it. This, but the thing is, is is this is um is a bit of a um is a split. Is in in one way, it's like there's no in the apparent story. There's no investment left in um, thinking that your happiness is not doing this or or not or being like this or being a certain way. There's no investment left in it. You're correct in, in saying that. Then also on the other side, it's like uh, it was just written. That was just the story is just written that Lisa is no more shy. Like because even going into those stories of um, tendencies is in a way saying in a subtle way that there is something happening or there is somebody um, there is a process, but it's also apparently. Like, in another way, it's just what happens, because it's so easy to think that, um, that cause and effect, because cause and effect are so convincing to the mind that thinks in time, and it's so easy to begin to believe that they're having some effect on the next moment, but there is no next moment, there is only just this. And so, it's like one way, yes, I can go into that conversation of tendencies, like, um, yeah, there's no longer investment. And I can go into teachings of seeking. But in another way, it's like, I like to cut them down too, because in another way, it's just, it's like, this is just happening. Like, so, endlessly, like, yeah. endlessly. Well, knowing, like, that, endlessly, you, like, knowing that, you've built an immunity from tendencies, and you can talk about them, and if it, if it somehow helps people that, that can't see any farther than tendencies, yeah, yeah, and, so it, and, I'm, and if it comes up with people, like, like sometimes I talk about it with people, and sometimes I don't. But there's also also a wanting to also like keep it in apparently, or keep saying apparently, or keep saying, but just in the story, because then because you're just buying back into them believing that there is yeah. another moment and there is something that can be done and there is a doer where there's not at all. It's just arising in this moment. But it apparently seems to the mind, because it thinks in time and space, that there was something that came before this. And this has to be broken as well. Well, it doesn't have to be, but this Yeah, it's dynamic. wise. It's it wise to, to really see through it and to keep reminding, you know. And it's wise not to just kind of talk like, oh, yeah, now we're back in reality. I was just kind of giving a speech there. But, <laughs> you know, just saying, no, that's really... Uh, 
a, a pure way to look at it is just if you're not really wrapped up in in interpretation and remembrance and comparison. Because pe pe people want to get me to talk about stories and and tendencies. I see this, and I'm not opposed to talking about it. But then there's also another sense, which is like I don't think like that anymore. I don't think like uh, like Lisa broke her tendencies, or there was this happening, or this dynamic, or Lisa became liberated, or there was a process. This just doesn't. There's just really it's very simple actually there's just life happening and there's very little thought to past and, and people ask these questions and it's almost like a koan like what it's like I get, this is all bizarre stuff it's just what's happening <laughs> i really don't know anything i'm just doing <laughs> but apparently lisa talks to people about this subject it's a bizarre i love it <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, you know, uh, what happened to me? Um, somebody said they're doing a film fest, and somehow I got a lot of hits about it. And so then, uh, in the end, I talked to the guy and whatnot. You know, uh, not really like going to a film fest, but uh, internet thing. And uh, he was interested in some of my shows, and so it got me to kind of look back at a bunch of things that I'd done in the in the past four years. And actually, I put together way too many, you know. And and so then. I burned a bunch of discs and I started to uh, listen to them. So now I'm getting thrown back on a whole bunch of things I, I had said at different times. And uh, one was uh, a guy from Traditional Advaita was saying that Traditional Advaita had kind of three points of view. I think I said this just in the last person I talked with. And uh, he called, what did he call them? He called them the empirical view and the, uh, and the illusory view and the... And what's the other one? That's uh, absolute view. And so then uh, a lot of people like to just remind people that, hey, let's just take a look of this from all three maybe, or, but at least let's uh, hit it once from the absolute view that nothing really is happening out there and, and, uh, and that, uh, you know, there's no, there's no time other than what you create by your remembrances and what I call the juxtaposition of uh, an image against what's here. And, uh, but then a lot of people are uh, in what is called, that's where we're all, I guess, from the start. Well, not from the start, but somehow when after childhood passes, so many of us are into this seemingly empirical view, meaning like what you see is what you get, conventional wisdom. It's just like the world is solid and I'm a, I'm a little uh, a moat floating around in it trying to uh, make my way and, uh, you know, and that's, that's uh, I don't know if we should talk in that language ever. Or, you know, I mean, that's basically what we're doing was we're trying to uh, give hints about uh, the absolute. Yeah. And we're trying to give it to someone that really doesn't have that kind of a view. I don't even know if those are true, but that's just something that uh, I was told by, by someone that, pra you know, had studied a long time uh, traditional Advaita. And so then... Apparently in India, that's something that people have come up with. I'm, I mean, it's just one way to look at it. But I mean, you can kind of, yeah. it kind of corresponds. I, um, yeah. I just say whatever comes up. Right out. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's not a tendency, right? <laughs> uh, well, no, if you heard me in the beginning, I quite clearly said, Lisa taught. Lisa went through, like apparently in the story, she was taught these teachings, and this is what I teach. Yeah. So that's what I said in the beginning of our conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I had, I had a parent teacher, and like it's not like I'm going to go and teach you to swim from these apparent teachers. Like uh, these apparent teachers taught me a certain perspective. Uh, there's no sense that that was what brought me to liberation, but this is just an apparent story. But. But now it's similar to what they t taught me. Lisa speaks of, or is spoken of. Right. <laughs> but it makes no difference. <laughs> no, no, I get it. I get it. You know, I'm just kidding a little bit. Uh, you know, like I have a lot of tendencies in what I say. I, I started out that way. I said, you know, I guess I, when I make an introduction, I'm always saying the same thing. I hope it's not too yeah. annoying. <laughs> So my tendency yeah. is that I believe that somehow that's effective or that could be reminded, you know, just to go back to what I said. Because, yeah, go ahead. 
because the whole world happens in apparent cause and effect. So it's not like you're going to just suddenly start speaking in French and then start speaking about um, about Re- uh, well, actually, you might know about Reiki, but like about cooking. Uh, you know, cooking a steak. It's not, this world works in apparent cause and effect. So the fact that this apparent story here went through a certain teaching and then she goes on to teach those apparent teachings, it's not like she's going to go on and teach something else. This is just the way the world works. So, but it's no sense of being personal to yeah. anyone. It's just what happens. It just comes out. She, I sit here, the computer's here, you ask a question and really, out it really, comes. Really, right out. Whether it's, whether it's right or wrong or helpful or not helpful is not even considered here. Right it's on. just what happens. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible for a lot of people to hear. A lot of people hate this. They'll be switching off straight away. <laughs> she can't even say she's right. <laughs> No, it's good to say a parent, you know. I like that, you know. I uh, I don't, you know, actually sureness is, you know, we said that the world works in cause and effect. Of course, uh, cause and effect are impressed upon the world. In other words, I would say that the mind's main duty is to uh, uh, recognize patterns. See? And so most people think they're recognizing patterns that really exist. But I say there's a, it's pretty clear that there's a foggy area there because if you're looking through a pattern, you're liable to see that pattern. In fact, you notice that pattern's getting to be all over the place nowadays. And so you're looking through that pattern, and that pattern is just something you're creating because that's the mind's job is to create a pattern. That's the only way it can project uh, from what it used to know to what it might happen, you know. And then supposedly that's a protective mechanism, I guess, because if you see a pattern that kind of has teeth in it, you can dodge next time it comes up. And uh, I don't know, that's just, we can, acknowledging that in a way is just, uh, is useful because it doesn't really put it down. It doesn't make you try to run away from it or suppress it. And you could just say, well, I mean, is that necessary now? Uh, yeah, but I'm going to be the pain in the butt person who says, who says uh, but acknowledging just happens or not happens. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> well, okay, I'm the guy, pain in the butt guy that says, okay, now I'm going to let it happen, you know. <laughs> Acknowledgement, it just happened, right? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow it seems uh, useful to take the world a little bit less seriously, especially the so-called your place in the world or, you know, what you think about the world or uh, your, uh, your uh, world view of how the world works. And uh, yeah. for a long time we're so sure about it, you know, and we think that everyone should agree with us. And then it seems to be real useful to be a little bit humble about it. And, uh, you know, others will go right and say not knowing is the highest state or something like that. But you don't even have to say that. Just loosen up a little. And that seems to be uh, a fertile ground for inquiry and for for letting something new yeah. happen. And uh, Yeah. There's no rejection of, of of anything happening, even if it appears completely... Yeah, new ideas completely contradictory yeah, right. to, to to anything that you that uh, that you might have in the past like held to or anything like that. Anything can arise. In other words, anything. if you want to, and it's, if you want to loosen up a little bit and just kind of uh, see uh, what could be new, I mean, you have to kind of leave a little space for it. And so then, if, if you're yeah. already all full of. I know this, I know that, I know this, I know that, I'm sure of this, I'm sure of that. Uh, where could it fit in? You know, it just can't fit in anywhere. So that seems like a very simple first step to just uh, yeah. exp- broaden. There will never, ever be anybody that's right or any teachings that's correct. Ever, ever. It's impossible for that to, to be the case. Nothing can ever be stood by. Everything is, is, is uh, was just arising and falling away. Just bubbles of... Uh, thoughts, bubbles, of, and it's, it's, it, nothing can be stood by. Even the greatest truth, or I, I am nothing and I am everything, none of it can be stood by. It's just, all is just happening, just as it is, with no intellectual interpretation into the world. Not that thinking doesn't happen, but there's no standing point at all. No standing point. It makes conversation slightly um, boring if someone wants to get something out of it, but if you... You have no standing point. Like everything can be accepted, even something that's so 
like angry and narrow and focused, it can be completely accepted and embraced. Exactly the same as somebody talking in, about uh, vita or spirituality. It's no, there's no difference. It's all just arising. There's, pre there's normally preferences that arise too, but yeah, it's great. And it's not even, as you say, standing and not knowing because that's another idea. It's all just coming up. It's just free fall. But even that's another idea. <laughs> There's nothing to hold on to, <laughs> and it's and it is. It brings so much humor and light. Like there's, it's so funny. Life is incredibly funny until it's not found funny. But <laughs> well, you know, sometimes like uh, maybe what should I do? Retreat to a tendency. I don't know. Uh, it came across. You know, it came to me that uh, everything we say about the world, every world view, in a way, is used as an excuse to be who we are or who we think we are. And so, in a way, everything we say about, uh, about life, about the world, about ourselves is used to stick ourselves, to be stuck, and to try to, yeah. you know, slow, the, slow down the world, let me get off, <laughs> you know, okay. hold it, hold it, you know, this is just too much of a flow and a flux, you know, and actually every concept, in a way, is trying to nail something down so that we can, ha we can yeah. possess it. And uh, we can't really possess it because it's just uh, uh, the fluid of life that's flowing. One time I said over the waterfall, you know, it's gone, you know, <laughs> every second is yeah. gone. And uh, yeah. we can, the only thing we can do is uh, take a photo of it, uh, stick a concept on it and put it in our library. And, uh, yeah. you know, then that's kind of like a denial of the whole life process. And the more of those concepts we have, the deader we are probably. Yeah, and and this is funny. What happens here is, is, is people ask about the story or ask about um, concepts, and it is it's like an empty vacuum. Suddenly, there's like oh, remembering of Lisa's story. It's not like I walk around like a zombie, but it's it is. It's just it's like a oh yes, this is Lisa's story. This this is what happened. But it's just there's no there's no sense of trying to 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 be something. Like I go to work and um, and I have friends and they have no idea I talk about this. They have no sense that that uh, yeah that I talk about this or that I've studied this. That I talk with them about very like the, we chat about boyfriends or like uh, you know shoes whatever <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> At least you still go to work because I was telling you that one person I talked to this afternoon said no way I wouldn't be able to I wouldn't really have it, any energy for that or I mean like I just. You know, I'm not there. I'm somehow not there. You know, but yeah, yeah. I only work uh, part time. Lisa, her ten tendencies. Talking about tendencies, like she likes uh, to sit around a lot. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she, and my work's quite. Um, I work uh, as um, a in a cafe as a chef and like waitress, and so it's quite full on. It's very physical work. Oh, I enjoy oh it. yeah, that's fun, huh? Because you're really yeah, serving people and you really get to uh, actually create something for them. I like cooking myself, yeah. you know. And uh, one time I had a yeah, restaurant yeah. too, but I wasn't always the cook there. But uh, it was nice just to be able to offer. Sorry? Be able to offer what we, uh, you know, whatever our yeah. production was. And The news seems to be such a powerful influence on our life and the way the world works. And it's always telling... The what, sorry? The news, you know. The news. The yeah, news. like it's always telling us about there's so much pain in the world. and Well, I think there is uh, probably a lot of pain in the world. I've, I've pretty much insulated myself or isolated myself from it. And I've used the excuse that I've got good karma and that, I'm, you know, I don't have any pain in my life, so... It's kind of like adopting, uh, you know, spiritual tenets uh, to keep certain convenient separation uh, going. And then in the meantime, pretending, I, I suppose I pretend a little that I know what non-duality is. Or uh, I really don't have to because it's not my role to, uh, to be realized or anything like that. So in public, I'm pretty good with uh, just saying I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> it allows for a big honesty you know i mean i have no really i know i have no need of a cover-up you know but uh 
Well, I'm not saying I'm not suggesting anyone else does, but I'm just saying that, you know, uh, I just noticed lately actually that I was using a certain amount of spirituality as as a way to separate myself w from what I called pain in the world. And so then, uh, being separate from it, uh, you could say it's just arising, but I would say it's a tendency that I w I didn't go near it, you know, <laughs> pretty pretty much on purpose and uh, so that just arose too but I mean uh, it sounds too convenient really uh, that I was you you know I was able to use that for my own purposes you know what I mean yeah um... maybe there's some place I could have been of aid or you know maybe I am of aid just to say that you know and to put it on the table and say that uh, yeah. th there's ways we can kind of skip out on our fellow human being. I don't. I don't really um, think about it. Um, it used to be uh, thought about a lot in this story. Uh, originally, uh, I used to, when I was a lot younger, I used to be an activist and became a vegetarian when I was like eight years old and a vegan when I was twelve, and was very into to this um, subject. Uh, and then that fell away. And now I don't really think about it. But one thing I I do notice <laughs> with this amazing mind that could think in time and space is that um, is that uh, is that this is this is all just a story in a way, but this that this is perfect giving. Like there's no like. Um, you said perfect. Like in no, in no longer having um, expectations and in no longer having uh, a needs for life to be a certain way, you're continuously giving to life. It's like le there's this like flow of continual giving. I don't really know how to, to say it. but uh, So I don't really think about other people's pain. People ask if I try to save people. I have no sense of trying to save anyone or liberate anyone. That seems like a bizarre idea. It's never really thought about. But, um, but there is a sense of... There's a feeling that comes about with this of giving. Like, I don't really understand it intellectually. Like that there's always giving. That this is part of happiness. But that's um, just a story, really, because really there's no giving and no anything. But uh, yeah. I'm just, feels like um, When you're open to life, you're op or when you're you're no longer bound by concepts, you're open to anything happening. Which is yeah, it's perfect giving, it's perfect love. And so that's all I have to say about pain and suffering and other people's pain and suffering. <laughs> 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 I don't think really about it, but <laughs> like people always ask this, they always want to come down to the suffering question. Oh, yeah. What about all the suffering people in the world? What about the people that um, experience pain? It's it's like why is this all? Why is this coming up? What's the thoughts around yeah, it? Yeah, I'm not really asking why, and I'm not really uh, uh, thinking that I should be a, a do-gooder. But I am noticing that I uh, purposely avoided it, you know, in the story. In in the story, uh, I, I built a barrier. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I did it with, you know, concepts and with, uh, with what I thought was actually good. And I think I've taken that barrier down and saying, well, whatever arise, you know, whatever arises can arise, and just say, let it, you know, let it rip. If this pain is around, let me see it. And I have even uh, fooled That's around, going uh, not really too seriously, because it's kind of hard to get into prisons and stuff like that. As far as uh, doing volunteer work, or um, I kind of fooled around with mm, where can you find homeless people or things like that to see. Yeah, I wanted to talk to them too. And uh, more or less, I'm just doing the never not here thing. And, and then I got the story too, which is still a story. Yeah, that uh, this is uh, somehow helpful, you know, to, just to talk about it must be helpful. Uh, but then if you're in that dynamic of being helpful, then you're also, there's also the opposite of being destructive. Like, like that there's good or bad, you're in that dynamic. Like of that, there's somebody doing here doing something. Like how can it ever be helpful when all of this is arising without any story? It's all just happening in this moment. 
yes, it works in apparent cause and effect, but but how? But to be helpful implies that you're actually doing something, that the, the past is actually doing something, when the past never does anything. The past is just what happens. It's like the film, you know how the film's recorded in just pictures? And then when you put it together, it looks like one big film. Like, you know, it's just separate pictures. And then you put it together and it looks like film and it looks like movement. This is how life is working. Just very, it's, there's only ever one moment, but I'm just using this as a, rep, um, as a metaphor. Um, but this net past never, ever affected this moment, ever. So there can be no helpful. There can be nobody doing um, helping someone. Apparently, help can happen. Apparently, Lisa talks to people and, um, and, and something happens. Um, but that's only the story. That's only apparently what's happening. Like Lisa in the story can be used as a mechanism to liberate people or to make people very angry and very upset or, or whatever it is. But it's only just apparently. Otherwise, if you get into the, as soon as you've got even the thought of helping someone, you're getting into to any dynamic of appreciation, of, of, of not being appreciated. It's all related. It's all in this dualistic thinking that you're somebody doing something. You're a separate individual doing something. That something is affecting another. This will always lead to suffering. This will always lead to the seeking. This will always lead to what the individual doesn't want, but thinks that um, it is what it wants. Thinks that in that seeking that it will get what it wants, but it never will. It's a, a, tra a tragic comedy. It's like, you know how the hamsters run around in the pools? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> They think that they're getting somewhere, but the hamster, the great thing about the hamster is the hamster's always happy with it. The hamster's always like, yes, I'm getting somewhere. It never realizes it never gets anywhere. <laughs> but the humans always got that sense of frustration. As soon as they're in the seeking, I can do something, I can get somewhere. They're great frustration. So even in the sense of the helper, like pe people um, sometimes send me on Facebook beautiful, beautiful mes messages. And it's nice. It's nice. But then equally, people send me a horrible message, like, you're a loony tune. <laughs> this, uh, what are you talking about? You're mad, you're on the Whatever they say. It's, it's no difference, really, though. I mean, there is a preference to the nice ones. But if, if I like them, if I was attached to them, if there was any sense that I was helping, there would be an aversion of the, horror, of the ones that are apparently horrible. It's the same with everything. So helping, not helping, anything that has the, any belief that that the last moment is affecting the next moment will lead to suffering because in that there is a doer, in that there is a separate individual. <laughs> and this and this sounds this sounds this is so you know people will say yes but what about the people that, that are just coming to you the lighter teachings but as soon as I go it as soon as there's any going into to story and and cause and effect and believing in that I I'm support there's a supporting of the story there's a supporting of the belief in the story one of um, my one of my uh, main teachers although I'm reluctant to say it because there's really no teachers really but that, that was their job constantly coming up there's nobody doing anything nobody doing anything nobody doing anything until absolute exhaustion happened <laughs> and it's and it's that the mind hates this the mind hates it there's nothing you can claim to or hold to, anything, including the ideas that your teachings are right or wrong or that anybody's got it or as liberation, nothing. All there is is this moment happening and we're talking. There's things arising in this moment. This is really just all that's... Is it, is it important when people realize what you say and realize it for themselves? I suppose it is, otherwise they wouldn't be involved in, it wouldn't be happening where they were attracted to, to listen about it, listen to it. So realizing, it's, it, it doesn't, you know what I mean? Real, uh, in other words, they realize it for themselves. It doesn't, it's, no, it's not important. There's no emphasis here. Like, like sometimes when I'm talking to people, they, sometimes what happens is they, they um, talk for a long time and there's a sitting and listening there's no big push to try and get them to understand anything there's no that's not a, a dynamic that's happening here it doesn't feel it important however this heart or this being or when somebody writes writes to me and there's um a lot of love or space or whatever you want to call it there's a seeing that there's a seeing there that um this heart sings 
this heart really likes it. That's what happened. So somebody writes me a message saying, um, just saying that, that uh, just talking about love or falling in love with what is or um, seeing that there was never any sorry, whatever the message is, this being sings, this heart sings, this heart loves hearing this. That's so unpersonal though, but that's just what um, that happens. But there's no emphasis and there's no push. It sounds so strange because I record videos, I put them up on Facebook and people come and ask me questions. But there's no sense of, how could there be a sense of trying, of an importance of someone trying to get it? Because this being will only see liberation in anybody, in everybody. Like you can't see, it can't see, how can it see somebody there doing something? Because it's seen here there's nobody doing something. So it can't see somebody else doing something. It can only see what's, it, it can't get into that dynamic. So then the heart can sing no matter what's happening, right? Well, yes, but it's like it doesn't. It, it, I mean, the heart does it. Like it doesn't. Like somebody writes to me and says, um, uh, you know, says, sends a, a, um, a really aggressive or hateful message, and then it's uh, indifferent to it, but it shuts it. The next person sends um, a message of how in love they are, and then, and then the heart's like, the heart sings. There's no attachment to thinking that's the way it should be or shouldn't be. It's just a pleasure or a pain. It's very, it's pleasurable to, to hear people singing love songs or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's real clear. <laughs> that's real clear. You know, I guess I suppose, like the way I introduced her when I was talking about, oh, there's three points of view in traditional Advaita, and then so then the belief might be that, my, even my belief, is that these are all going on at the same time. One is really happening, and the others are apparently happening. And uh, so then people are at effect of that apparentness in some way. Uh, they might be have a psychological suffering, or they might actually... Uh, have just uh, been shot up, you know, by somebody that was freaking out in uh, in uh, some reality story, and uh, I don't know. I I I don't really think that I can uh, change that, but uh, I suppose I uh, I don't even know if I regretted anything because, like, what's the point of you know not of I just saw that I. I was cutting it out and I didn't want to do that anymore. I didn't want to arbitrarily just lop that chunk of uh, humanity off that are in this, uh, that are seem to be at effect of uh, this arising story that's uh, so strong in them. And the cause and effect and the chain of reactions and the bad circumstances and the, you know, the, the bad luck of, uh, of uh, their family and their country and their whatever the story that we all tell about that, because I guess we can tell yeah. that story too, you know, it's not only them telling it. Yeah. And it's, it's bizarre because actually there's no, there's no real sense of, of, of this anymore, of the pain, uh, the suffering. Like uh, when you talk about this, like the mind isn't interested in going and, and thinking about this or this doesn't go and think about it. But however, I... I for hours, this being will talk about what happiness is um, with people that are suffering greatly. So, but I, I have no interest really in the, the apparent <laughs> suffering really stories. <laughs> so, uh, also, when people are coming and talking to me and um, asking questions, if they go too much into the suffering story, they, I'll cut it off after. Oh, yeah. Practically. It's real and the heart sings or doesn't sing, you know, in that sense. It's real to the heart which sings or doesn't sing. Like I was, uh, you know, I was young uh, some half century ago or something like that. <laughs> and uh, for instance, if I would go to Washington, D.C. and walk by the Vietnam uh, Memorial and there's 60,000 names that are etched in that uh, wall, I would have huge feelings. My heart would really be singing, you know. And, uh, you know, it's, I remember when I was there, I wasn't in Vietnam, but I remember when, you know, people came back in a box and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. it's really, really overwhelming. It's totally overwhelming and unbelievable. Yeah. 
and 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 um it's not just a memory i mean it's 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 a whole full body full on body experience yeah the, yeah this uh, you know so sometimes some stories can be um i have a very sick friend at the moment and you know sometimes this this overwhelming crying happens but it's um it's no it's just sort of but think about it. There's not really much thinking around it, but it'll be in front of them, a friend, and, and tears come up, and then they fall away again. And mo but mostly I don't really those go are into, like, yeah, the right. I don't know why I got into that pain so much. I guess I was just what's happening with me, you know, not so much with you or what and I needed to yeah. point it toward you. But I mean, I just thought I'd bring it up because I just saw that I was skirting around that and. I, I was playing at non-duality and in oneness, but I was really you know, hanging on for dear life to separation. And uh, I think that's worthwhile to say to people, you know, because they can notice it if that's happening. Maybe it's only my, my, it's only me. I don't know. And I can't, the thing is, is, is in when you say it's worthwhile to say to people, it's like in like this um, worthwhile or not worthwhile just said I, mean, I can't who knows <laughs> so since it's arising <laughs> I can't suppress it right <laughs> no it's just a, it's just a arising yeah right. and it's and there's and, and there's absolutely nothing there's nothing wrong with that how could there be, right? So, or even if there is, the wrongness yeah. is arising too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. There's nothing, yeah. It's, uh, there's nothing right with it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just what it is. This story, the, the, what has arisen in here is a seeing of, um, of the pain and uh, avoiding the pain or holding on to oneness to avoid pain. And that's what's seen there. And that's absolutely perfect to be seen. This being isn't interested in, in then validating that and saying it's worthwhile or... or that's just because that's what's arising here. It's to, to not get into no interest in, in uh, thinking like that. But it's not that all of this isn't divinely perfect. There's nothing wrong with all this apparent... Like, that's how it works. It's through apparent stories. So, of course, it's going to... Apparently, the undoing of the seeker is going to apparently happen through a story of liberation and through a story of undoing all these ideas. But that's only ever apparently. Because this is a, a perfect film which happens in cause and effects. There's going to be, for some people, the story is that they wake up and that's it and there's never been any teachings and there never needs to be any teaching. But for other people, there's this parent liberation story. For here, here there was 10 years of, of, um, of seeking, of awakening, of dramatic uh, events. And, but that's only the apparent story of liberation, which is exactly the same as the apparent story of the business person or the apparent story of the homeless person or the apparent story in the war zone. It's exactly the same, but it's just apparently. It's just the way that um, the human uh, mechanism works is seeing and uh, comprehending these stories which never actually happened. But it's a divine, great game for consciousness or life to play, to play through these apparent stories. And there's nothing wrong with any of them. They're all just as divine as each other. It's just this one is very uninterested in uh, talking about much of many of them. <laughs> now, but it's not, so it's a great not divine rather. game. It's a great divine game, see? And then I, I suppose uh, a good story would be like if you, when you really uh, see the whole thing from the perspective that uh, it's arising, you'd probably be a better player at playing that game. Or others could say, well, no, I don't want to play anymore because what's the point? <laughs> so I don't know. there's two choices, but I guess they're not choices because... Uh, <laughs> it's just happening. Right on. So the good, so getting better or not better doesn't uh, just happen. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. And it's great uh, like talking to people about this because, because the tendency is, is to always go into the story because we're so... The, the mechanism of the human is to always look at past and future. It's great. It's hilarious that we're always in that dynamic when none of it's actually happening. <laughs> ever. Ever. This is only the... Uh, 
what will ever happen is this. Isn't that hilarious? That we've our whole life thought that it's based on past and and um, and potential future. Right, and cause and effect, and uh, and uh, yeah, you and know improvements, and uh, and uh, you know at it, getting more adequate, and uh, right. I think it's a great game, you know. I like playing it, but uh, <laughs> suppose I could stop someday. <laughs> I think I'm doing my role really good because I have to keep bouncing you back, you know, and then uh, you just keep pulling us out, right? And I keep bouncing <laughs> you back and you pull us out, you know, and people say, why is he bouncing her back all the time? And it's for, I'm, I'm grabbing those guys that are still down there, you know. <laughs> and then, uh, come on, just let Lisa pull you out another time. <laughs> I'm giving all your excuses to her, you know. I'm trying to think of every last one. So... <laughs> <laughs> She's incredibly boring now. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's really incredibly cool. <laughs> God, I really thank you. You're really, a, you're really uh, a trooper there, because I kept uh, whacking away at you. So that uh, <laughs> you're really doing uh, yeah, a great, a grand job of, po of pointing out uh, a really infallible truth that you know. Nobody can ever do anything. <laughs> ever. And that and that dynamic will always be the suffering. It's thinking and believing. The dynamic of thinking and believing there is an individual here doing So we can't do anything, we can't even accept it, right? <laughs> we can't even be in sync with it, you know? We can't even enjoy it. But enjoyment arises, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Enjoyment arises and parent stories arising, and thinking arising, and uh, arises and emotions arise. The window arises, and the bird arises, and the tree, and Richard. <laughs> so we're learning the address of freedom. <laughs> Sorry? We're learning the address of freedom. Go to uh, the Freedom's house and, uh, and just uh, be there for it. And apparently looking at emotions happen in the story, and looking at um, karmic patterns. Uh, and different energies and it's all is apparently happening in the story of Lisa. And none of it's wrong at all. It couldn't ever, ever be wrong. It couldn't be wrong to sit and meditate for four hours if that's what arises. It couldn't be wrong to uh, to go to a, a monastery or to go and live in the forest or to look at your thinking because that is what is arising. The investigation of thinking is what is arising, that is what is arising. I really thank you, Lisa. <laughs> That's arising. <laughs> Lisa Cairns. It's lovely to talk to you, Richard. Thank you very much. And thanks everyone for coming and checking out what we're up to and uh, come again and uh, if it arises. <laughs> and uh, that'll be all for today. So thank you, Lisa. Thank you.